What makes something a good song? Clever lyrics? A rocking guitar solo? Auto-tune? Well, Don't Hug Me, I'm Scared is full of musical classics, ranging from campfire songs to the kind of thing you'd hear at a stanky rave. So I thought it'd be a bunch of fun to rank them all in a battle of the ages. Brother versus brother, song versus song. It's gonna get intense. The music is such a big part of the show. Usually, some kind of inanimate object comes alive and begins teaching the lead trio misleading life lessons, often starting out fun and jolly before taking a dark turn. And boy, there's quite a few of them, so I think it's best if we just roll up our sleeves and jump straight into it. Also, I just want to say, this show is incredible, and every single song on here is at least an 8 out of 10. So, just because a song is low on this list, doesn't mean it's a bad scene. That being said, let's go. Number 15. Todney's Bedtime Song. No thank you to the song, Todney. Tommy's Bedtime Song is the shortest track on this list. It's kind of the musical form of a roofie. La, 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 la. It's used to make Yellow pass the fuck out. So I guess it's kind of more spell than song. Which is pretty dangerous. This song should only be sung by responsible folks. And I gotta say, Tommy boy, it's a little one note. It's just Tommy making bird noises over and over again in different pitches. But maybe, if we heard the full version, we'd get some Kendrick Lamar level storytelling. So this one's sort of an enigma. When his little face pops up from behind Lily, it cracks me up every single time. Tommy's enthusiasm really carries this one. I'm not sure what he's trying to say, but he is saying it with passion. But again, it's not really a proper song and too much is unknown about it. And that's why I gotta put it lower down. Number 14, Warren's Friendship Song. You've gotta be better best friends. <sighs> oh Warren, you slimy, slimy boy. I really wanted to make you a star, but with tracks like these, it ain't happening, partner. The friendship song is what happens when the last person who should be teaching you about friendship attempts to do so. It's a story time song. Once upon a time there was a guy that I knew. Where Warren the Worm, sorry, Eagle, gives us an example of what happened to his friend who drove all his mates away because he needs to be the centre of attention. But he doesn't portray it this way. It's made out like they did him dirty by not giving him money for his business idea. Everything about this song is so uncomfortable because Warren's character is designed to be pathetic. It's not intended to be a good song. None of it really rhymes. At the end, he just mashes all the keys. I mean, he's giving it his all. Hey for that guy. But the trio just stare on in silence with blank expressions on their faces, occasionally chiming in to express their confusion. How long is this gonna last? Warren keeps throwing in these little uncomfortable nervous laughs at the end of his lines, and it makes it feel like we're watching a year six talent show when he felt like his friends weren't treating him right or someone who's come in to talk to the students about friendship but none of it is landing like remember when ninja tried to break the world record for the most number of people flossing in one location i'm not seeing enough movement yeah it just kind of reminds me of that and not only that the trio cut the song off short and usually, I'd be a little sad about that. But Warren's voice is so jarring that I'm glad they did. Seriously, whoever voices him does an excellent job. Stop talking amongst yourselves, okay? So yeah, it's no musical masterpiece, but it's not intended to be. Just further making us want to run away from this eagle worm man. And for that reason, I gotta place it right down here at the bottom. Number 13, The Road Trip Boogie Woogie. It looks pretty good to me. The excitement of the open road. Now take that feeling of travelling with your boys, throw it into a song, and you have the road trip boogie woogie. That's not what it's called, that's just what I call it. Because, well, just listen to it. We're going fast, we're going forward with such good company. Despite appearing in what's probably my favourite episode, 
I will admit that you could take this song out and nothing about the story would really change. But we do get some iconic shots. We see Yellow doing what I do when I message a fine woman. We see Red's string hair flicking about like he's a top male model. You can tell that they really just had fun with this one. Sometimes you can forget we're watching extremely skilled puppeteering, and I mean that as a compliment. I think of the puppets as real characters, it's done so smoothly. So when Roy, Yellow's father, is yeeted out the window, they don't try and puppeteer him, they just let him be all droopy. It's a nice reminder of just how much hard work goes into this show to make these puppets feel like real characters. And the whole idea of a group of friends singing a jolly jig whilst driving around in a literal corpse just adds another layer of messed up goodness to the whole thing. It's a really great scene, a good song, but you could argue it's a little out of place to have a chummy friendship song in an episode where every other scene has the trio at odds with one another, especially Red, who's frustrated with this whole life. And again, it's a great song, but this is Don't Hug Me I'm Scared. There's just 12 songs which I prefer. Number 12. There's a worm in your brain. You will have a worm in your brain. Oh my god. Look at this man's drip. Not just single denim, not double denim, but triple denim. The world can't handle this much denim. It's such an amazing look and his little strut towards the camera. A true fashion icon that makes me smile every time I see it. This song reminds me of a campfire sing-along. When your mind makes you think that everything's bad with just a simple, quiet guitar as the instrumentals. It's a very sweet moment as the trio come together, singing in unison and realising that they are good pals. And for once, instead of a deranged talking object teaching us a lesson, it's the boys. And the lesson that everyone has a little voice inside their head which puts themselves down. And at this moment, the song feels like a complete resolution for an episode titled Friendship. Even Yellow's imaginary friends join in. All of the truly good characters with no sinister motives on the same page. But of course, this doesn't last. And the song is stopped in its tracks when Yellow breaks their new computer and it devolves into chaos. What really carries this song are Duck and Red's lines. They took me completely off guard, and Duck's delivery is so good. Documents I've been forging have led to many deaths, but I know that's just silly. And personally, my favourite parts of Don't Hug Me, I'm Scared are when they lean into the darker side of things. And I feel like this song is mainly for laughs. And that's why this one comes in a little lower. Choo Choo number 11, the transport song. All the transport song is one of the more unique songs in the show, completely changing art form from live action puppets to 2D animation. The man who voices Mr. Transport does such a great job of acting like someone who is about to die on the spot. You could take a few steps with your legs, but you won't get very far. <laughs> He's really running on fumes here. And it must be hard to voice act like this whilst also singing this fun, jolly song. He really nails that, God, I hate my job, but let's get on with it. And because this song is 2D animation, they didn't have to worry about building all these different puppets and locations. So it gives them the opportunity to sneak in so many fun little background gags and Easter eggs. Like Roy being in the plane that flies past them. And with Mr. Transport being such an old fella, they really lean into that retro style. The visuals have this sort of VHS look, where there's bars flickering on the screen and dead pixels, which occasionally pop up. It's quite a slow song, a bit less energetic than some of the others on this list. We're all having such fun for transport. Oh. The kind of track you'd put on when going for an evening stroll. And again, this list is so hard to make because all these songs are so great. But we are essentially watching a man bust out a concert on his deathbed. Oh, uh, there's nothing, just a rock. And if I'm being honest, it shows. Number 10, The Brain Friends Theme. 
<laughs> Yum for Dinka. <laughs> the Brain Friends theme is a track all about the joy of imaginary friends, which plays as Yellow escapes his harsh reality and dives deep into his own mind, where nothing can hurt him. Brain Friends. The song is made to sound as welcoming as possible, like a warm hug with lyrics like Having such fun adventures with the friends inside your brain Oh brain, oh brain, oh brain And it's not just one person, it's a whole group A boy band maybe Making the brain friends world feel more full of life The visuals are claymation Well, 3D animation made to look like claymation But it's barely even noticeable They did a great job of recreating that uneven shiny texture you get when moulding clay and just like the transport song, because it is a different art form, it allows them to get away with things which are hard to pass off in live action. Like the character Sata David having his kite head fly off when he begins clapping, as he needs to constantly grab onto it. It's an easy to miss moment, but just shows how much care went into the visuals. And what I love about the Brain Friends theme is that it enhances the story of the episode. As Yellow disassociates and travels further and further into his own mind, his surroundings become more simplified, less things to think about, less things that can hurt him. And so, for each new layer of his mind, we get a new version of the Brain Friends song. The first is a theme for young children. Brain Friends but the second seems aimed towards babies. <laughs> but the third and final variation is Warren's take on the song after he fully invades the deepest part of Yellow's mind. And instead of calming, it's fear-inducing, sounding like a mix of crying and screaming coming from the darkness. <laughs> Twice it sets up this peaceful song, so that when it is flipped to horror, it's so much more impactful. And I would love to put this one higher, but outside the context of the three different versions, individually I'd say they're not quite as impressive as the ones I've placed above them. Number 9. When you meet a businessman, you must shake him by the hand. This fun little jig got stuck in my head for ages. And even though it doesn't have any relevance to the story, it's some great advice for life. Well, if you're a businessman. I like how when it's originally played, you can barely hear it as it's coming from Duck's little tape player. And it's just the instrumental. And it seems like a quick throwaway joke. But then, as the credits roll later on, they hit you with the full version at full volume. When you meet a businessman, you must shake him by the hand. So it feels like I heard an underground leaked track, and now it's been released. And I'm like, oh, I remember this song. I heard this song before it was popular, before the artist was even born. It also gives us some nice little clues towards the teachers to come throughout the rest of the series. When you meet the choo -choo man, you must shake him by the hand. It seems like the person who voices Duck just hopped on the mic and did this little freestyle for a bit of fun and they included it in the show, saying whatever came to mind. It gives it that improvisational feel that Rick and Morty sometimes has. Technically, you could remove it from the episode and nothing would change other than a businessman-shaped hole in my heart. But I'm a big fan of setting up a joke which isn't paid off until much later on. It shows patience and that you trust your audience to still get it. Which is why it comes in at number 9. Number 8. Add a little bit more margarine. Boy, today is a big day. And you know, a big day deserves a big day song. And that's exactly what the episode Death gave us. This song is set into motion by Mr. Coffin to help encourage the trio to start getting ready for Duck's funeral. And despite this dark context, it's got a really fun party feel, with colourful patterns wriggling around in the background, the kind of patterns you'd see on wrapping paper. There's a sing-along element to it too, like a karaoke, with the lyrics at the bottom of the screen changing colour as they sing them, as well as a little icon of Duck bouncing between the words. 
and the enthusiasm of the moves that Yellow busts out can't be ignored. Even Red, who's usually so monotone and down, is throwing some hands up. Excitement is really in the air with this one. It's the kind of thing that I'd put on at a wedding maybe, after the reception when everyone's looking to get loose. The various transitions they use look like the default swipes on Windows Movie Maker, giving it that indie underground vibe. Like our little trio are an undiscovered band, and this song is so catchy. We gotta get things ready for the big day, big day. It's mad how easily something can get stuck in your head just by repeating itself a couple times. I was subconsciously singing this for a good week after I saw it. My family probably thought I was going insane. And this song does a great job of establishing how easily the characters can get distracted. As towards the end, Yellow and Red start to forget what the big day is all about, and focus on making a shepherd's pie instead. It seems like they don't really understand what a funeral or death really is. And seeing as the episode this song plays in is all about the different approaches to death and grief that someone might have, this song helps to set up a more positive outlook that the character of Stain Edwards will bring to the table later on. And that's why it comes in at number 8. Number 7. Because we have the same diseases. Ever felt this thing called being lonely? Well boy, does Don't Hug Me I'm Scared have the song for you. After Duck is banished from the hellish twins' household without the others, he feels isolated and tries to convince himself that he doesn't need nobody. All he needs is himself. And suddenly, a whole family of duck clones appear. But underneath this don't give a damn front, You know what? I'm actually glad I don't have a family. He's a sad, vulnerable boy. It's a look into the effect that isolation and loneliness can have on you. How when you have no one else, you have to resort to your own mind. It's as though he's talking to himself, but in a literal sense fighting with himself, eating with himself, and Duck's voice really gets across this hopelessness and vulnerability, which is pretty rare for him. I don't even want to be in a family. As he's usually quite blunt. I thought I was supposed to invent a digital currency, not this. What? There's a really simple moment where one of the Duck clones rubs his head on the real Duck's shoulder which is a subtle but sad moment because we're watching someone having to comfort themselves because no one else is around to do so. Something which I think a lot of people deal with. And the final shot is perfect. As the music fades out, it stays on Duck. As the food on the table fades away, this big family meal fantasy slipping away with just the sound of the projector running with whistling wind. making it feel even more empty and cold. This is one of the only solo songs in the entire show, and the only one from a member of the trio. And as the subject matter is the craving for company, it's a smart choice. This song really does make you sympathise for Duck, and so isn't just a good song, but great character development too. Time for the final six. First, a quick message from our guest speaker. Mr. Snoop Doggy Dog. Subscribe to What A Way to make me the happiest little girl in the world. Thanks, Snoop. Number six, The Blob Song. The people think we're in a simulation. This song is probably the most hopeful and wholesome song in the entire show. I wanna thank you for this opportunity. From the only character who seems to be truly innocent and pure, Stain Edwards, the forever boy a pink blob of clay born just minutes before. The song represents childhood wonder, as we see Stain's dream to set off into the universe and explore everything, asking questions about existence and creation. Stain has this level of awareness which none of the trio have. Like you really built the pyramid. People. And why are we even here? And the instrumentals really help get across this wonder beginning with these upbeat synths. Life grows at all. I used to be a blob of nothing at all. And the choice of clay is very smart, as it can literally warp and grow into anything it wants to be. It's a way of showing a healthier outlook on change, compared to yellow and red's approach, 
which is denial. And the animation isn't just regular claymation, it's kind of a blend of 2D and 3D, as though they moulded the clay into a flat surface. I hope this diagram helps to explain what I mean. And whilst I was sad when the song gets cut off by Yellow towards the end, Spirit of Adventure! Finance. Stop it! This perfectly shows his attitude towards change. He wants nothing to do with these things, and so nothing to do with the song. Which is saying a lot, because usually Yellow easily gets sucked up into the groovy tunes without a second thought. Look at him dancing away, the little boogie boy. Just pure wonder and imagination. Don't let him keep you down, Stain. Number 5. The Family Song I love my family and they like me! This song feels like a fever dream about two creepy twins, which it essentially is. Todney and Lily are the teachers with arguably the worst intentions in the show, their goal being to split the trio up, giving out old-fashioned and outright false rules you must follow if you want to be a proper family. You're not a real family unless you have a landline. They act like they're experts, goddamn professors with PhDs in family game time. Family game time! Family game time! Family game time. But really, they're just misguided children. They can't even form a word in the right order. They don't even know how to spell. The song is supposed to go through a word for each letter of family, but ends up spelling nonsense, and the advice is incoherent too going on about ants and landlines and nose rings, and we get this glorious shot. Todney dripped out with his brand new piercing with a hair flick too. Sheesh. This is gonna be a common trend with most of the songs above this one, but I feel like you could show someone this song and it would give them a good idea of what to expect from the series as a whole. Just like how every episode goes, it starts off normal and fairly tame, but then quickly gets more and more bizarre and unexpected until it slowly devolves into chaos. And it's a great choice of having the twins be separated by the trio, like they're surrounding them, trapping them in. The twins' whole goal is to mislead and divide and confuse the trio, and one way of doing this is by throwing so much at them that they can't make out any of it. And that's why this little extra tacked on bit at the end of the chorus is so smart. It's a very weird way to phrase this sentence, tripping you up for a few seconds. I'm probably a little biased because the twins are my favourite characters in the entire show, but I just think that everything about this one clicks, and it's really my kind of humour. They really lean into that blunt straightforwardness that often comes with children. They don't give a damn. Mommy? Yeah. Terrible sandwich, by the way. Thanks for letting me know. What is terrible? It's so uncomfortable, but you can't look away. Number four, Memories. Are too weak. This is a bit of a slower song from Red and Yellow as they reflect on their memories of their dearly departed friend. Sort of a swan song. Or should I say duck song? Oh yeah! At first, it appears to have a good message. Memories help me remember him. But very quickly, it becomes clear that the trio have almost no good memories of each other. As the only stuff that Yellow can remember is Duck yelling at him, telling him he's too weak for the military. Join the military. Are too weak. It's a way of showing that we tend to look back on the deceased with rose-tinted glasses, even if they might not deserve it. And something I love is when the line between the song and the episode's natural dialogue isn't so clear, when it becomes a vital part of the storytelling. As this song doesn't have an actual ending, it trails off as Yellow singing turns into him speaking the lyrics to himself with his voice shaking from grief. These lyrics, which are actually good advice and quite wholesome, become morbid as he digs Duck's body up, as though he's trying to listen to the advice, but it's not working, just remembering isn't enough. And this transition from the song to the next scene is so seamless, I really didn't see it coming. Memories of me going outside. 
It's not just a well-crafted and executed song, but a well-crafted bit of storytelling too. Oh boy, it's time for bronze, silver and gold. And coming in at number three is the work song. You can be anything you want to do. This is the first song that gets jammed out in the show. An upbeat, optimistic track all about how you can be whatever you want to do. With the trio jumping from location to location, dressed up as multiple occupations. You can be the guy who types so fast on computer. We get some simple but really creative and colourful backgrounds that help to give off that childlike feel, like you're watching a school play, before they're thrown into a dull grey factory. It's a way of showing how as children we're constantly told we'll get our dream job when we're older if we work hard, when that's not necessarily true how we're often set up for disappointment, making work look like this fun, colourful time. And I love how this song is the catalyst for the whole episode. The story doesn't work without it. As Mr Briefcase tells them, Oh, you could be the guys who work as a team in the workplace. Yes. Before he just runs out and abandons them. And so then, as the events of the episode take place in the factory, you almost forget about both him and this song. It goes to the back of your mind. And then, as the plot reaches its boiling point, where everything goes all hectic, Mr Briefcase is found. And the song continues as though it's never stopped. It's as though this entire episode takes place as an extended verse in this upbeat song. And again, it just shows so much trust in your audience, having to wait so long for the payoff to the song. A really nice touch is how none of the careers which they discuss or mention are named as their actual profession. For example, instead of naming a therapist, they call it the one who deals with the sad ones. As though the trio will not understand these big boy words. Teaching them, but not teaching them at the same time. There's a line in this song which sets up Red's attitude perfectly. I would really prefer to do as little as possible or nothing at all. Red's journey throughout the show is one of someone who can't escape their situation no matter how hard he tries, making him pretty miserable most of the time, never wanting to engage in the bizarre antics. And because his voice is so monotone, is that an option? This line really stands out from the rest of the song. And so just a few minutes into the first episode, you understand what Red's all about. This song just does an amazing job of capturing the essence of the show, with all the misleading lessons. I mean, we even get a short clip of the trio in a classroom. It's a great opening piece of setup for the rest of the show, and that's why it comes in at number three. Number two, Electricity. What about my shredder? Electricity is such an upbeat, fun song. Becky Sloan, who actually co-created the show, voices Electracy and brings such enthusiasm. It's time your brains will learn about electricity. I mean, hell, I'm convinced, along with the trio, that electricity is pretty damn trendy. There's some really clever wordplay in this song too. That comedy side of the comedy horror really shines here. I think the electric chair joke might be my favourite joke in the entire show. What about this boring breadboard? Let's turn it into an electric breadboard. What about a boring chair? That could be an electric chair. The electronic beat is on point. I can see this being played at a rave while I smoke crack rock behind the bins and don't get let in. And it fits the theme too. Electricity, electronic, and I'm not 100% sure, but I think there's some auto-tune going on here, which I would usually not be a fan of, but again, it works because of the theme of the song. Gives it that bleep bloop bleep bloop robot voice. Most of the songs in the show are very misleading lessons, on purpose of course, that's the whole point. But here, I see no lies, and I appreciate Elect Tracy for her honesty. And if all this wasn't enough, Duck comes in with a guest feature which ranges so many different emotions. A powerful, powerful piece of music dedicated to his beloved Shredder. What about my Shredder? 
I really wasn't expecting a beat switch from this one, and it was a very welcome surprise. A nice break from the rest of the song, which is very high energy. And this isn't the only beat switch which shows how much range this track has, because Elect Tracy goes the extra mile and throws in a wicked guitar solo that would make even Slash proud. The guitar has a face. Even they're amazed by this rockin' song, and I can't blame them. All right! Really? But there can only be one winner. So, what's it gonna be? -na 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 -na. Number one. I'm not a cube. I love this stress song. To me, the visuals are some of the best animation seen throughout the show, with Duck navigating a black void, whilst creatures that look like demons try and attack him, drawn from colourful, glowing lines. It's simple, but just pops off the screen, and you know me. I like my duckies to pop. The song is a big old metaphor for stress and bad thoughts, and all the nonsense advice which companies might tell you to help get rid of them. Not because they care, but because they need you to get back to work and be an ideal employee. Perhaps there's still a place for you here after all. What? We just need to deal with your attitude. It's got that stop moping about, you're making everyone uncomfortable energy to it. And one of my favourite shots is Duck walking a tightrope whilst these creatures snap at him from below. A visualisation of this stress and how inescapable it can seem. It's simple visual storytelling at its best. And a lot of the songs which I've talked about are hilarious and great within the context of the show and the story, but I probably wouldn't slap them on at a function unless I'd had at least two beers. Apart from Tommy's bedtime song, that helps me get to sleep. But even outside the show, the production of this song is really creative and experimental. There's this electronic echo to the vocals where the words bleed over each other slightly. Here's some guidance for dealing with stress. And for a song about how confusing advice for stress can be, this distorted voice, which can be hard to make out at times, perfectly helps to hammer that home, as well as the lyrics, especially the second half where the voice giving Duck advice tells him some of the most confusing dialogue I've ever heard in my life. All your thoughts are squeezed inside a cube, and the cube is in a garden, but the garden isn't real. Move over, man bear piggy. It's time for garden library cube man now. No one could make sense of what Duck's being told, and that's the point. It reminds me of those a thousand page self-help books. If I have to memorise and read all of this, that's going to make me even more stressed. The best advice is simple advice. The stress song also gives us a good glimpse into Duck's character. When a whittle crab tries to pop a pill into his mouth, his face turns annoyed and he swats the pill away. Duck never really seems to put up with any of the untruthful lessons which are shown to the trio. Where are we going to go? I thought I was supposed to invent a digital currency, but not this. What? And he seems to realise when he's being tricked. What does that even mean? And here, he refuses the unhelpful help and cuts the song off when it reaches its most confusing point. It's short but sweet, and if this comes on the tune rotation, it's never getting skipped. It's my personal favourite Don't Hug Me I'm Scared song. <sighs> Damn. What a musical adventure. We laughed, we cried, but we made it through. Drop your favourite song and why in the comments, I find it all really interesting. I'd like to see some other opinions. Maybe one of your favourites is one of my least favourites. Subscribe for a bunch of rankings like Love Death Robots and... I can't think of what else I'm going to do. Black Mirror. I don't know, Black Mirror. I'll rank... Uh the best cheeses, anything. Let me know what to rank next in the comments. So this video was a little bit more laid back than what I usually do. I've done so much analysis recently, I thought it was time for a little breath of fresh air. Before I dive into the final Don't Hug Me I'm Scared video, which will be the longest and should be out fairly soon. But it won't be the end of Don't Hug Me I'm Scared on this channel. 
I've got a few planned which I think will be pretty fun, as well as the YouTube series to look at. Which is why I didn't include them on this list, because I would be biased towards the Channel 4 episodes at this point, and the YouTube series is made up of just songs, so I wouldn't really be able to do them justice in this video. But yeah, enough ranting and raving, thank you so much for watching, I really do appreciate the continued support on these videos, I still can't wrap my head around it, so yeah. I've put links in the description for every song mentioned in this video, thank you, I love you, goodbye.